is going on, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of the Legislative Director talking about legislative things. Uh, here she is. We're still finding a way to clone her so we can put her where we need her at the State House. Legislative Director Amber Marr joining her as always. Not the Legislative Director Jason Topsy, not, not the Legislative Director Edison Pollock. No need to clone either of us because there is no value to it. Um, Amber, Addison, how are you? Uh, good to see you. Um, yeah, what's going on? Hello. How are you guys? <laughs> howdy, howdy. Glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, we are working our way through this session. Um it's hard to believe that we're almost at the halfway point. What, end of next week, Amber? Is that correct? A uh, week and a couple days, yes. Uh, Can't get here soon third, enough. Yeah, second and third deadlines will, or next week is the deadline for committee reports. And then the week after, there's a couple days for second and third reading deadlines. And then they take a, a break and they will give us, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday uh, to recoup before we swap bills in the chambers and we start this show all over again <laughs> thought you were going to say a different sh word there for a second um which would have been fine uh I'm trying dan, to, dan, to dan's ready on on the bleep button if we need it uh and considering some of these bills we might want to use it uh any so with that said uh you know i made the joke about cloning you because you're got to be all over the place uh at the state house um there were a lot of bills uh, that we were getting in the mix on that we talked about last week, but we're also getting in the mix on next week. So without further ado, uh, let's get into it. Uh, what, it, what is it that we want to talk about first? Um, and I think we got some updates on some things, not moving some things that are moving lots happening. Yes. So I'm going to kick it off uh, by starting with, I feel like the same bill we might've started, uh, started with the last episode, uh, Senate Bill 369, which is the Marion County Public Transportation Corporation bill. Um, this is the bill that I am going to let Addison uh, jump in again because I love the way he explains it. Uh, and then I can talk a little bit about um, maybe some history of what will happen with this if we are lucky. Um, so basically right now, this bill, as we talked about uh, last time as well, is that it has been assigned to the Rules and Legislative Procedures Committee, which if you remember, this committee can be, bills go to this committee for several reasons. Uh, we're hoping that this reason is, is that it's not going to get out of there <laughs> and it won't be recommitted. Uh, sometimes there's just process where things get put there to make sure that it's okay, that you know, all the rules are being followed with a specific piece of legislation, and then the rules and legislative procedures will recommit it to the appropriate committee. Uh, right now, there is no rules and legislative procedures committee uh, scheduled. So with that being said, Addison, please, do you mind just giving a little bit of background again about what the bill does, kind of what some messages that we've been hearing over the last week, uh, how they are not necessarily... Uh, lining up with with facts, and then uh, we can go from there. Absolutely. Thanks, Amber. Glad to be here. Um, so what Senate Bill 369 would do if it was passed is uh, it would ban um, dedicated lanes for bus rapid transit projects in Marion County outside of the mile square of the downtown. So the, the very center of the city, um, outside of that, uh, no dedicated lanes would be permitted except for the uh, red line, which is currently in operation and has dedicated lanes, um, goes north and south. And then um, it, would not, it would also not impact the purple line, which um, is starting construction in the spring. So essentially this targets the blue line, which is the line that goes east-west, um, from Cumberland out to the uh, Indianapolis International Airport. Um, and because this bill specifically targets the blue line, it, um, it, it impacts the other funding mechanisms that are in play. So um, if it, this bill was to become law, um, or yes, if it was to become law, it would essentially jeopardize the federal funding that's in place because um, 
I'm not a federal uh, <laughs> funding expert, but I know that federal projects um, or federal funding um, for local projects requires a certain scoring for infrastructure projects. So um, if you take away the dedicated lanes, that essentially uh, would lower the score of this project and that would uh, forego the funding that um, that is currently in play for the blue line. So if you're following that, if this bill goes through, it could um, jeopardize the, um, the score that the project would receive and then that would impact the level of funding. So um, it's not a good thing. Um, I think that that is a really strong message that you we might want to um, have viewers communicate to their lawmakers that you know this would impact the federal funding which listen folks it's not just about transit it's also there's a whole host of um, infrastructure that comes along with those dedicated lanes so there's sidewalks there's ADA curb ramps there's uh, stormwater drainage all the whole gamut so um, really important point um, and that's a, a lot of funding I think it's around a hundred million dollars of federal funding that would um, that would be in jeopardy. So I don't know if Jason or Amber, you want to add anything? Yeah. yeah, I mean, and it's not just like losing that federal funding impacts, you know, the whole project, but it's also the 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 investment that comes from even making this redevelopment. So putting in the new lanes and the bus stops and the curbs and the crosswalks and the stormwater, it, like it it spurs other development all along that line. So you're talking about, you know, it's even more tens of millions of dollars that are down the line um, that won't come to fruition if this project were to be like halted as it is currently designed. So um, hopefully it stays where it currently resides in the rules committee. Um, and then, you know, maybe we can stop talking about it and just let Marion County do its thing. That'd be fun. <laughs> that would yeah. be kind of nice um all right so that's good news goodish news <laughs> so we oh. yeah and we, yes one thing absolutely. i wanted to plug sorry one thing i wanted to plug is uh aarp indiana conducted a survey of marion county voters um it was around sample size of like 600 voters or something like that um all registered voters so not just the 50 plus even though we had a good helping of uh 50 50 plus individuals in that uh, who were surveyed. Um, but it has a lot of great points about um, just underscoring the fact that we value transit in Marion County and we uh, voters would like to see the Marion County transit plan be built out to um, to the fullest extent. So uh, you can go to that web address right there in the banner and um, check that out. Yep. AARP.org slash IN should be there right up towards the top. Uh, click on that. And there's, you know, there's a blog post, there's a press release, there's a link to the full survey. If you really want to dive into those numbers because you're into that kind of thing. Uh, and there's also, you know, a little infographic there with, you know, pretty pictures and such things. So you can get stuff quick at a glance. Uh, so a lot of information there and uh, encourage you to check it out. Awesome. I think that that survey really does show just how important transit is to um, Marion County, Indianapolis as a whole, even as we are compared against other cities for economic development and bringing business here, not to mention consumers who use it on the regular. So I think that that is really important um, that that survey shows and came back with just how we suspected it would. So, yep, absolutely. Sure. Now that we're done talking about transit, I'm going to peace out, guys. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> he's, he's trying so hard to get out of here, and we All won't right. let him. We won't let happened. him. We won't let him do it. it you really my are trying to, yeah, you're really trying to skirt your duties on this show with me, aren't you? <laughs> hey, I have places to be, guys. No, I'm kidding. All right, let's see to do. <laughs> Just oh, well, we appreciate you taking time to be with us, Addison. I know that... Uh, I wouldn't want you to be anywhere else right now. So maybe that will help. Appreciate that. <laughs> okay, no. we're moving on. Um, moving on. <laughs> yes, uh, moving on. To, oh, sorry. And just one last thing on the, on the transit bill I forgot to mention. We are doing our due diligence and still continuing to meet um, with legislators, not only who are um, head of the rules and legislative procedures, 
committee, but also the um, transportation committee. So we have been sharing this survey, sharing other information about what this bill would do. And so we will do that until the very end. Um, so, yes. Next bill, Senate Bill 13, which is the Select Commission on Passenger Rail. We also mentioned this last time as well. Um, I think, let's see, it is, it was just amended on second reading not too long ago, so it is now eligible for third reading vote. We are really hoping that it will pass out of the Senate and move over to the House so we can keep it moving through the process. This is Senator Cruz's bill, um, and this would just create the Select Commission on Passenger Rail to talk about improvements, um, things that could be done or, you know, with the money that there, sorry, let's start over. There is some money available through the federal government that will um, go to both rail on the national level as well as the state level. And we're really hoping that this commission would be able to sort of come up with a plan on how to use those funds across the state of Indiana. Um, Addison, I did not describe that very well, uh, but do you have anything to add as well to uh, this particular discussion? You described it just fine. I would just reiterate the fact that this puts the state in a really good position, having this select committee if, if it's um, in place. Um, I'm on board with it, if you will. Um, I think that that's a good bill. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. A little bit um, of a pun. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that, um, yeah, we value at AARP, we value mobility options, um, not only in your community, but um, connections to other communities. So I think that this is um, this is great. It's a huge quality of life factor too. It's not just about transportation, it's about experience. And I think a lot of the folks that testified um, at the last hearing on this bill talked about how pleasant traveling by train is. So um, it's good, good stuff. I'm glad we're putting our weight behind it. Several folks in enjoying their experiences on the train. Um, and I think it's uh, Senator Cruz is putting the bill in a position where maybe some of his colleagues that are skeptical of having a commission, uh, putting it into a place where they can feel comfortable with it. Um, so I think uh, hopefully we'll, I guess we'll see what happens uh, in the next, uh, in th this upcoming week, uh, but hopefully it, it keeps on chugging along, if you will. <laughs> choo choo. Let's keep going. <laughs> yes, this is perfect. <laughs> Man, I think All we're right. today. We need to move on, please. <laughs> Let's move on to the next stop. All right. I'm going to chugga chugga right along to the next bill. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Dan. We're moving on. <laughs> Um, next bill, which you guys might also have some things to say about this one too. Senate Bill 71, the absentee voting for the elderly and disabled. Um, Senator oh, J.D. Ford, what'd you say? I said we're in favor of it. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. Indeed. We are very supportive of Senate Bill 71. Uh, Senator J.D. Ford is the author of the bill and Senator John Ford was the chairman of the committee that gave it a hearing. Um, I believe that when the bill was heard, it was simply for a discussion um, and trying to get these discussions moving. Uh, there was no vote taken on it. Basically, what this bill would do is it simplifies the process for individuals that are already able to request and receive an absentee ballot, uh, both for individuals with disabilities and as they're referring to in this bill, um, the elderly, which right now you have to be 65 or older to um, request an absentee ballot. So basically, this would just allow individuals that already have the opportunity to have um, or to, you know, request an absentee ballot, they would be able to have a permanent status of absentee ballots. And that would mean that they would not have to apply every year during an election to receive their ballot. Uh, the only caveat in the bill would be that if they didn't vote in um, three consecutive elections, they would drop off that list. They could once again apply to be um, that permanent status again, but they just would not remain on it if they didn't vote in the past three elections. We did ask when we uh, supported the bill 
that that was a piece that we thought, you know, could be a little nuanced. Uh, we would love to have seen that language be removed if the bill did move. Um, but we also said that there could have just been a process inserted where someone was notified that they would they were going to be removed from the list, and then they could say, hey, can I, I'd like to stay on. It would just be one way um, to continue to remove barriers. Unfortunately, like I, I might have alluded to, it was just a discussion. There was no vote taken on it, um, but we were really grateful to be talking about it. Hopefully, if Senator Ford doesn't bring the bill back uh, in the four more days that he has, uh, maybe we can continue these discussions into the next session. But um, so as far as this particular bill, Addison, Jason, you guys have anything to add to this? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a good discussion. Um, I think the some of the concerns that some of the committee members expressed, um, you know, it can be debated about whether or not they're valid or not. Uh, but I think there are things that um, it was a good discussion to be had because, as you mentioned, these are voters that already qualify <laughs> to receive their absentee ballot, and this is just kind of removing a hurdle for them uh, to do so because uh, for folks that want to request that ballot, um, you know, every election, which there's one almost every single year uh, here in Indiana, that you have to, you know, fill out that form and send it off to your clerk's office or, you know, whomever, or like, you know, your voter registration office in your county uh, to get your, to request it and then get your ballot sent. Whereas if you were just get to do it just that one time saying like from here on out, you know, just, I want that absentee ballot. Uh, you know, it's the issue too, with regards to transportation for folks, uh, to like to get to their polling site, uh, if they want, like, so that they don't have to go and vote in person, um, and, and that type of thing. So it's, I think it, it's kind of like, we think obviously the folks here, I think it's kind of, it just makes a lot of sense because these are people that are already, uh, registered. They're already allowed to get that absentee ballot. It's just kind of removing that, um, that hurdle for them. I know that there was some concern around like in our primaries, uh, you know, Indiana, it's, you have to like, when you're voting in a primary, you got to kind of declare which ballot you want, whether it be the Republican or the democratic ballot. So there were some concerns around that. It seemed like, and just how people were getting informed about it or how many ballots they, you know, those types of things is kind of where the discussion, uh, lot, you know, was going towards. So I don't know. It, it was a good discussion. Would, would like to see it move forward, but obviously that's not our, uh, we'll see what, we'll see what the chairman decides. Yeah. I would just add that, you know, it's a matter of convenience, really. Uh, you're not really changing a whole lot other than just making it a little easier for folks who are already voting and already voting absentee. So um, definitely support it. Yeah. I mean, and we're also talking about older voters is, are the voting block that is the most reliable. Uh, so these are people that are consistently always voting. So I, it's, you know, it makes a lot of sense. Hopefully we can keep it moving forward. Excellent. Uh, so we will move on to the next bill. We'll keep you posted on Senate Bill 71. Um, we should have an update maybe during, uh, you know, half half time, if you will. <laughs> uh, so we'll know whether that makes it through the process or not. Next bill, I'm just going to quickly touch on House Bill 1203. We're kind of in the same situation. That one is the closed captioning bill that we discussed, which would have just... Um, made businesses turn on the closed captioning uh, on the TV in their establishments. And that was heard uh, last week and there was not a vote taken because they were going to discuss some amendments that might need to be made. And we kind of went all the way through that. Uh, unfortunately, it has not been brought back yet. So we do have a couple days in the house uh, to do that, but we will see kind of where that goes. So stay tuned on that. Just wanted to give a quick update that so far, it has not been brought back to committee for a vote. Uh, House Bill 1087, the Dementia Services Coordinator. We touched on this last time as well. Uh, this actually has, you know, it was heard in committee. A vote was taken. It passed 10-0, which was awesome. Um, it has been recommitted. And unfortunately, I don't know that I could get the website to work today to see <laughs> has been scheduled for next week. It was recommitted to the Ways and Means Committee. 
we're really hoping that we're going to get the opportunity to continue that discussion. Although we're not in a budget year, um, there are some funds federally that we have that we could uh put towards that particular position and keep that going for a couple of years before we actually have to look at where we would need to find that funding otherwise. So hopefully we can kind of make sure that individuals in the Ways and Means <laughs> Committee understand that we're not necessarily asking for a budget line item right now, um, but we might have to in the future. So that could impact it, but we'll see. So stay tuned. Hopefully we're going to get a hearing on that and we will let you know. I think the last bill that I just wanted to touch on before we wrapped this up um, is House Bill 352, which is the Supervised Consumer Loans Bill. This was just recently heard in committee. It passed seven to two. Uh, we are not in favor of this bill. Uh, for those who have been around for a little bit of time, um, this sort of falls into a category of loans that are not necessarily in the best interest of consumers, although they might be taking advantage of these loans, it can easily spin into um, a downward spiral of debt. Um, so basically, while this is not a payday loan, the bill also does nothing to assist with that section of the loans that we have been forever we're talking about trying to help consumers by eliminating the payday loans in Indiana, which many states have done. This bill does not do that. This bill actually, while it is being discussed as an alternative um, to those loans, it is actually expanding the installment loan space. Um, it puts a new product out there that while at first glance might seem like a lower APR uh, than payday lending loans, um, but it's still 257% which is astronomically high. I don't know if any of you have taken a loan out before, but I would tell you that if I see 257%, I can't imagine how that is even able to be done and passed along to the consumer. Um, just to give a quick example, uh, uh, roughly if you are taking a loan out for $2,500 at 250% APR, you end up borrowing, or I'm sorry, um, you end up, um, having interest of about $1,500, as well as fees, and that results in roughly a $670 payment for consumers that are using these loans. It's a lot of money. I know that um, some of the discussion talks about that, where would these individuals go if they didn't have the ability to get these types of loans? And I know that, you know, Addison, you might want to chime in here. There are spaces in Indiana, um, businesses that do offer um, low cost loans for individuals that maybe can't get them through a bank or another institution. And we would really like to see those alternatives be highlighted instead of adding additional loans that um, will just cause further decay of um, financial security. Addison, did you, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, good point. Um, I don't have the entire list off the top of my head, but I know Bright Point in Fort Wayne is a really good um, source of, you know, a, an array of services, but these, you know, sort of more helpful loans, um, these loans that are not, uh, obviously not predatory, they're, they're there to assist individuals who are um, lower income or need um, some, you know, some sort of assistance or, or down and out. Um, financially. Um, one point that I just want to mention is that these um, products don't build any credit for the borrower. So that is, you're not really, you're only helping folks uh, in the immediate circumstance, but you're not really, these products aren't even really helping individuals because it's putting them further in debt. Like they might be able to pay off whatever they need to pay at that time. But um, like you mentioned, it's a spiral, it's a downward spiral. So um, we would like to see those alternative loan products that are offered um, through like places like Brightpoint, who are a little bit more helpful, um, expanded across the state. So uh, we'll see. We'll, we're going to keep chipping away at the at the issue. Yeah, I, I mean, just just saying that the sorry, Amber, just saying that the you know, oh, it's a lower rate. Well, just because it's absurdly high instead of obscenely high. <laughs> doesn't make it any better. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of 
where we are with this. And so, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll see what we can do, uh, or hopefully the, you know, people, you know, their, their better angels prevail, but you know, we'll see, uh, what we can do about that. And, uh, it, like, you know, it's, it's something we we're, we're going to keep on swinging away at and hopefully we can get it to a place to where it's, uh, you know, either not advancing or, you know, it's in some form that is, you know, not terrible, but the chances of it being in a place that's not terrible are, let's just say low. Um, and we'll just leave it at that. And uh, not low, like the interest rate of these loans. The exact opposite of what the interest rate <laughs> of these loans are. You um, got it. So, um, really fast, I did just want to say uh, we are a part of a coalition called the Hoosiers for Responsible Lending. And there are many partners that are involved in trying to work to inform everyone what this would actually do. And I just want to make sure that we we talk about that. This is going to be a really hard uh, journey uh, because I think that it's just, it's there's a lot in the bill that is hard to explain and with all of these calculations it's just complicated uh so we are we will be working with our partners who are with us in the hoosiers for responsible lending coalition um to continue to educate what this bill could potentially do so and this this seems like an issue that a lot of viewers might care about might want to reach out to their electeds about uh who can they contact versus it it's in the senate right Yes, it is currently in the Senate uh, right now. The author, because it has already passed out of committee, so it would be just contacting maybe your own senator uh, in your area, or, as well as uh, the author of the bill, who is Senator Andy Zay. So, perfect. And he's Thanks out of Fort Wayne. Well, yeah. the area. <laughs> we love Fort Wayne. Yes, we do. Um, so, so, friends you in know, the court. Make some phone calls. Yeah, please. Uh, we will continue to keep you posted and you will definitely be hearing more for, from us on that particular piece of legislation. So gentlemen, that wraps up the ones that I was going to talk about today. Uh, there are so many more, but I do hope to come at you with more, uh, a little more in depth information during halftime. Coming at you. All right. A lot happening. <laughs> Uh, a lot going on as per usual. Uh, Amber, thank you. Um, do we, I don't think we talked about this beforehand. Do we, do we have any shout outs or anything like that today? We don't have to, we don't, you know, we can take a, take a week off. Um, but, um, <laughs> you know, uh, I should have one. I should have a shout out, but I, any I partners or. I mean, you could do like, uh, the, I think Amber just name dropped him. The, you know, Hoosiers for responsible lending. Uh, yeah. Is that, did I say that correctly? Um, Who's just for response? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah I, it's, I feel like we have a lot of partners um, at the state house right now that are just yeah. fighting the good fight, trying to keep some of these bills moving as well as prevent some of them <laughs> from going somewhere. Uh, and it has been a task this session, I, I will say. So I would maybe just throw out a couple of our, our friends from the Institute uh, Prosperity Indiana. I mean, I, I know there's so many that we don't want to leave out. Yeah, uh, we got, the Ark of Indiana. A lot, um, a lot of friends our, at the state house, whether yes. it be in the housing space or the, you know, the transportation uh, lending. I mean, we got, we got a lot of, a lot of folks out there that are joining us in our efforts. So there we go. We got a blanket shout out to all of our partners. Um, yes. You know who you are. Um, <laughs> so if you didn't get the by name shout out, just know that we care deeply about you. Um, and thank you for your, thank you for your efforts. Um, okay, cool. Uh, Dan, producer Dan, you got anything to add? See if anything pops up. Um, I'm going to take his silence. Is Dan and, there? Dan. Yeah, I think he's there. He's, he's <laughs> I think he's on break. No, oh, there we go. Okay. So Dan's cool. Right. Uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, <laughs> Glad you're doing Addison, okay. Amber, you know, just good to see you. Uh, it's so good to see you guys. I really appreciate everything that you guys are doing too. We just all are trying to stay afloat these days. I'm trying to do it. Saying, okay, well, 
Until well, so that's like next time we talk, we'll wrap up that, and then maybe we'll also get a halftime one in there. I don't know. We'll get a couple more episodes in here before we uh, things start swapping houses uh, and getting um, in, in the craziness picks back up. But until then, uh, stay tuned. And also until then, on the next episode of the Legislative Director talking about legislative things, we will see you then. <laughs>